I will now request His Excellency Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa to kindly address us and he is kind enough to make a small presentation also. Uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for having me here in glamorous Delhi. Um, just to uh, tell you where we come from and what business we are in, uh, I'd like to uh, show you a couple of slides. Uh, my name is uh, Nawaf Al Khalifa. I am the chairman of the GCCIA. I am also the CEO of Electricity and Water Authority in Bahrain. Uh, just to start with, sorry for that. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, just to start with, just to see uh, where, what, what, what business are we in? Uh, we are connected the six the six countries by using supergrid, 400 kilovolt. And since that has been established of the supergrid, all the major incidents within the six countries have been avoided. There are no major incidents since we have established the grid. Actually, the grid when it has established, uh, there are other benefits we did not recognize at the beginning. It was established on the basis that we are saving on the spinning reserve. And the economics of it came from reserving of the spinning reserve. But fortunately, we have seen lots of other benefits that the grid have come up with. Maybe some of these benefits are actually more than saving in the spinning reserve. So you can see avoiding blackout uh, within the six country, you, can, you cannot put a dollar sign on that. Uh, we think that avoiding all the blackouts within the six countries have all came up because we are connected with together and we had a huge inertia that stabilized the six countries grid in turn. So there is no Bahrain grid or Kuwait grid or UAE grid. There is only one grid now called the GCC grid. And here we are expanding the, the grid to the second phase, which was the, the trading. The trading within the six countries, and luckily we have been seeing a huge growth in that trading, have created lots of growth, lots of benefits. And that growth that came with benefit trading was monetary or was in, in kind, have created lots of saving in all of the six countries that I think the return on the investment that we have put for the, this um, interconnection uh, really give us the right return in a very short time. Now we want to expand more. My previous speaker was talking about 2,000 mega. So we are talking about 60,000 mega. We want to trade 60,000 mega. We are very ambitious people. We don't think 2,000 mega is something very shallow. We don't want that. We want 60,000 mega. We want to think big because we are big and we are, we are called the Middle East because we are in the middle of the world. So since we are in the middle of the world, we want to trade from the right to the left north to the south, we're going to be in the middle, and we have 60,000 mega to trade. So therefore, just to tell you, this is the history where we, we have been. Now, I will tell you where we want to go. So connecting from Kuwait to Oman in one grid. Ladies and gentlemen, in one grid, and if I tell you that some of the incident that happens in Oman, the response of the machines in Kuwait was faster to stabilize the current in Oman than the machine in Oman itself. So that's to tell you the benefits of the grid. Now, we want to go beyond. And I think uh, India is the first gate to us. Uh, in 1950s, our currency was rupee. I am very familiar with the currency rupee. Because my fathers and grandfathers, when they talk about monetary aspect, they speak in rupee. So we think we have a, a very strong relationship with India. If you go to Bombay, you will understand what I mean. So therefore, I, I think we should get this trading back again, not in pearl, not in wood, but in electricity. Electricity can be traded better than anything else. So therefore, I, I think we can go to there 
to, uh, to that beyond that region. So let me tell you what we think about what is the electricity market is going to see. We believe the electricity market, the only constant word in electricity market is change. Change will be there. It's a very agile market. We can see the changes in that market. So the way we perceive the market nowadays, how it's being perceived, will change. Electrons will be transferred from one place to another. And it will be faster than you think. So therefore, lots of challenges is coming with this change, this dynamic environment. They say first you shape your environment, then your environment will shape you. So our environment will shape us. It will shape us because of the technology that comes with. Now more of the customers are becoming consumers. They are producing electricity. Uh, the, the signal, uh, the, 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 uh, the transmission of one line transmission is not anymore there. You have consumers. You have more people are, and the consumer himself is very keen on the environment, on the NOx, on the carbon dioxide, and he wants to share this. So we will play a great role. So that's why we are going to be in business by stabilizing that current, stabilizing all of these network. So we can see when we talk about energy in the future is going to be meaning one word, electricity. Energy, energy you don't mean gas, you don't mean anything. Energy means electricity and nothing else. So you can use them exchangeably. Electricity means energy, energy means electricity. Why? Because it is available, it's clean, it's the environmental friendly, the consumer is in the driving seat. So all of this will make electricity is the energy and energy is the electricity. So therefore, we are in the right business, ladies and gentlemen. We think we are in the right business, the business that will have growth. And I liked when I have a business and I'm growth, it means we are sustainable, we're going to be there, and we can also transfer that knowledge to our children and grandchildren so they can be also electrical engineers. So electricity business is going to boom in the future. So here we are. This is what we think that's going to the future, have going to have lots of challenges. It's going to have, so we have to change and adapt to those new challenges. And one of the adaption and changes to that environment is to, to connect to connect among different content. As, as you have mentioned, uh, my previous speaker, another speaker, he mentioned that when it is night in one place, it's daytime, and then you can transfer electricity from where one place to another. So therefore, electricity will be a commodity that is going to be uh, transferred from one, another, one place to another, and there will be a settlement for those electricity bills. So, let me see how much power we have and how much we have traded. You see, within the Gulf, within the Gulf market, we have, we can see there is a huge growth in exchange. We still want more to, from that, but because of the capacity availability, make that trading limited a little bit. But it's going to grow to be uh, in the future. It's going to have lots of growth because we have put a spot market. We are trading, and confidence is building up. Very important, ladies and gentlemen, in the trade, that confidence has to be there. That when a time I need to buy, you are ready to sell me. And that because electricity is as important as air. When it is 48 degrees outside, electricity is as air to live. So therefore, confidence level has to be increased. So therefore, we think within the renewable, each have renewable. So in renewable, what does it require? It requires stability. And stability in the network requires a grid, a super grid, to stabilize that electricity. So maybe in the future we're not going to sell kilowatt, we're going to sell kilowatt with inertia or kilowatt without inertia. That's how the two different prices. The way we are going to price electricity is going to be different. So we have to open our mind that electricity with inertia have maybe higher value than electricity without inertia. So therefore, a grid will play a great role in how electricity is going to be priced because each kilowatt have a different, uh, different purpose in stabilizing the network and stabilizing. So therefore, this is an opportunity and a threat at the same time. It's an opportunity that we can develop more on solar and more on renewable. Nevertheless, it might be a threat to the stability of the network. So how are you going to 
mitigate that threat by having those super grid with high inertia to stabilize the network. So therefore, all of this we have to think about the storage, we have to see how we're going to exchange the energy, and how we're going to have that interconnection. Let me you see, this is, I took this, uh, this graph uh, from California. And I think, see, we have a say in an Arab, we say, a smart person who learns from his mistakes. A smarter person who learn from other people's mistakes. So we have to be smarter. A smarter in a way than the smart person is when we see this grid, and how is this grid by in 2020, you can see how this dip, and then you need to stabilize the grid by having 13,000 megawatt in three hours. So that's gonna bring loss of instability in the network. So what do you do? Do you run conventional while you're running renewable? So therefore you are just emitting more emission? Or do you need super grid to stabilize that network? So that's why we think we are in business when we have such a grid to connect each other to stabilize when there is renewable. When there is renewable, it has an opportunity, it has a threat. Because if you have this, by the time of five, six o'clock, all the solar, their energy is, is going down, their, their generation is going down because it's, the sun is going down with it. And the demand by five, six o'clock is higher. So you have a higher demand by 6 p.m. and you have lower uh, generation from the solar. So what do you do? You need 13,000 megawatt in three hours to stabilize the network. So here we are, if we are connected together and we have that solar, then we can stabilize that network, I would say, more economically. Because you can stabilize it not in a economical, economical way. This is the thing, we need, we, they, the electricity is needed available and reliable, but in the most economical price. If, it, if electricity is available and reliable, but with a, with a very high price, then it's like you don't have it. Because electricity has to do with growth, it has to do with uh, well living of the people. So therefore, how do we see ourselves from here? We are in the middle, and we see ourselves, there is a huge potential to connect to, uh, to uh, this part of the world by having this connection, and I think it is what, think, what we think now is difficult, it's gonna be easy in the future, and by having this, we can trade electricity more than per, and we can trade that electricity, and it's going to be to the benefit for both c customers in both parts of the world. We're gonna have more stabilizing in the network, stability, both the stability of the network for both of us, and we are talking big, ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about uh, 2,000 or 3,000. We can start small and then we grow, but this is the, image, uh, the ambitious that we have, that we, we, we should have that uh, business in mind. So, uh, just to tell you, this is what I was talking about, that we had, if I had the surplus of power. So this, in winter, for example, we have more than 50 to 60,000 uh, uh, megawatts. So that's, that's a huge power to be traded. And this is because of the cyclicality of the business we have. We have a huge demand in summer, and then in winter is around one, two, three, between summer and winter. So therefore, uh, I think uh, the challenges, we are gonna have lots of challenges, in, and of course in cyber security, and, and if there's lots of challenges, but we have to mitigate those challenges and we have to be up to that environment ch changes. So this is what we think in the future of uh, what the grid is going to be worldwide. And it's gonna be sooner than we think that this is going to be. What is going to drive that is technology and the importance of electricity because electricity is going to be energy and because electricity can come from renewable sources. And more and more of demand of our customer that they would like to have more renewable electricity in the future. By this, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude my speech and I'll be more than happy later on to answer any of your questions in the round table discussion. Thank you very much.